love mornings in the garden. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Hate's hey, a Good Life. I'm so glad you're here because I'm finally home from all of my travels. Yeah, very honored to be a part of this weekend and something has just landed in the tree. And luckily it's not a hawk. It's just one of those birds. Are those lovebirds? Doves? I'm not actually quite sure. I feel like I should know. But they've completely captivated Oliver's attention. Uh, really grateful it's not the hawk. On the note of the hawk, uh, you might notice that the cats have their vests on. I bought them these dog vests a long time ago when I thought we were going to have these giant adventures and go to the mountains and take the cats. Uh, and then it ended up being a really good tool to teach them how to stay close to the house. And so at our old place, I didn't need to keep the vests on them. Uh, but I put the vests on them because they've been getting a little bit, uh, what's the right word? Disobedient, I guess you could say. But also because the vests have like shiny things and reflectors, they're good at keeping the hawks away. And we have a family of hawks in our neighborhood now. I actually saw one of them on my walk this morning. Have you ever locked eyes with a hawk? Let me just tell you that it is very intense. <laughs> I've never done that until today and it was a really special moment and I was also pretty scared. <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying, it's my absolute favorite thing to be out here in the morning. But now that I'm home from my travels, I have some work to do out here and some things to show you guys because my oh my, we have stuff popping up everywhere and I'm excited to keep planting the garden. We have some unexpected things growing in some unexpected places, so very curious as to how that happened. Uh, we've got some seeds to sow. I'm calling it succession planting. I just plant as much as I can, use my like garden planning brain power to make it happen. And uh, you know, you just do the best you can with the energy that you have. But I'm finally starting to get like what feels like this momentum on my energy again, which is really nice. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. I just noticed that some things have popped up and I'm really excited to share them with you guys. Okay, without further ado, let's get into a garden tour. So first up on this garden tour, we've got some table, table queen squash. Say that five times fast. First up on the garden tour, we have table queen squash, which is a black, I mean, kind of black on the outside form of squash. Uh, and Tommy said he would get out in the garden more with me if I planted black things. So I've planted as many black things as I can to get him out here and gardening with me. Next to it, we've got some, some blue hopi, blue hoppy corn. And then on the other side of that, I've got some cow peas, which I thought were a bean. And I think they are, um, I think they are a form of beans. So I kind of did like a mini three sisters garden on either side of the entrance of the garden simply because I didn't want to have to build as many trellises. So I'm hoping to be able to trellis the beans on the corn, which is really exciting. Uh, trying to use, you know, more natural methods and stuff. I've got all sorts of zinnias popping up. We have one sugar baby watermelon popping up over here. His companion has not sprouted, so we're going to re-sow that today got some kind of something I don't recognize popping up. But next to that little something, we've got butternut squash. I absolutely love butternut squash so much, so, so much. Uh, so I'm really excited to see that popping up. And I'm still learning about thinning. Uh, so give me your opinion on which one I should thin here. I, I know these can't all be this close together. I think I'm gonna have to pick the healthiest looking one and go with that, right? still so much to learn. I will say though, I'm having a lot of success with direct sowing. I noticed that last year that my transplants really struggled, but my direct sowed seeds did really well. That seems to be a better method for me. I don't know if it's our zone or the types of soil I'm using, but that just works better for me um, to just plant. I guess that kind of speaks to my personality style too. Uh, anyway, um, check out the entrance to the garden. The nasturtium are really going off. I also planted some seeds here from my sweet friend and subscriber, Sandy. Sandy, thank you so much for the seeds. These are the baby ones popping up right here. Right here, they're popping up and I'm really looking forward to having them in the garden. I've also planted some on this side, but this side of the trellis seems to be struggling a little bit. It gets more sun than this side. Um, and I know 
in the research I've done, I think that these plants would benefit from like a little bit more shade. So again, living and learning here as we go, doing the best we can. Um, I'm out here early today because it's supposed to be close to 100 degrees today. So I think I might even put an umbrella over my nasturtium uh, just to kind of protect them a little bit from the sun. I mentioned earlier, we've got the pink eye cow peas here. Now here's what I don't understand is how did watermelon get next to my peas? Like, did I just forget that I sewed the watermelon there? Or, I don't know, but I have a sign and peas popping up. It says Green Beauty Peas ran next to some watermelon and I'm gonna have to make the decision here. Do we do the peas or the watermelon? And I think I'm going to lean towards doing the peas. I'm sorry, lean, lean towards doing the watermelon um, simply because I wanna do peas in another location. And this is a lot of sunlight for peas. So I think this is gonna be too much. Um, so yeah, I wonder if I could transplant this watermelon plantling to the other side where we, we were going to direct sow that watermelon. I think I might try that. I think I might try that out. But here are the plants. Check it out. Also, we've got this rogue sunflower and he popped up so much while I was away. It's so fun to see sunflowers grow. Really random. It was from the first time I tried to sow seeds out here and it didn't, didn't do so well the first round. Um, and he ended up on the other side of the bed over here on this side. He was originally over there and now we have a rogue sunflower seed. So I think I'm just going to leave him because it makes me laugh. <laughs> All right. Now we're back to where I had my little freak out moment because I thought that my peppers were not germinating and it turns out I was wrong. I totally have peppers germinating, including a black Zulu bell pepper and a Jimmy Nardello Italian pepper, which is super exciting. I want to harvest as many peppers as I can to make my own seasonings. So I'm excited for that. Check. And behind that, we have our sunflowers and corn. I planted Haponica corn from uh, Baker Creek. It's like a black variety of corn, as you can guess why, uh, for Tommy, of course, and lots of sunflowers as well. And I'm hoping that by planting the corn and the sunflowers, it's going to be really tall. It's going to create an enclosed feeling, but it's also going to reach over the fence and hopefully invite some of our local pollinators and birds to the garden. So it's kind of what I'm thinking on that. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking there. We have some amaranth that's doing well. Actually, it's called celiosa. Celosia. Celiosa. Celosia. No, celosia. The celosia is doing well. And now perhaps one of my favorite parts of the garden is the kind of microclimate area of the garden where we're growing more cool weather crops where I'll plant all of the peas. Uh, but our carrots and beets and radishes are coming up. And most of these were planted by Tommy. So this is absolutely precious area over here to me. Uh, check it out. They're doing really well. Definitely going to have to thin the carrots out. I also planted the salvia here and it's a form of fuchsia salvia and uh, it invites the hummingbirds. And so the hummingbirds actually come in the morning and they land on the archway to the entrance of the uh, garden. They land on the uh, garden archway entrance and they hang out and they check all the flowers and they're actually also interested in the nasturtium, which I thought was interesting. Now this, this is honey melon sage and it smells absolutely divine. Oh, it smells so good. Now here's the thing that I haven't figured out yet is that these things smell wonderful and there are these amazing varieties of sage, but how do we use them? Because it doesn't taste how it smells like at all, at all, at all. Sometimes I'll just stand here and do this to the plant and release all the essential oils into the air and onto my hands. Oh, it smells so good. All right, we have a lot of planting to do in the cool weather bed. And last but not least, my special bed I don't know this is like next to our room and like I'm just gonna plant stuff I like in this bed so I did more sunflowers and more corn and this is called country gem corn so I've never grown corn or harvested corn but I am looking forward to trying it it's supposed to be really good and last but not least we've got the other bed here in the front the beans are out of control the corn is out of control the squash is out of control like everything is doing really really well which of course makes my heart so happy so let's check it out so right here we've got some gold marie vining beans these guys are doing really well showed you the nasturtium earlier we've got more squash now this is called this is me using my Spanish accent, I think, to speak Italian, I think. Um, this is zucchini rampicante. 
Hopefully I said that right. Uh, it's doing really well and it really exploded while I was away in San Francisco and uh, it's really, really doing well. So that's exciting to see. And again, in this area, we've got kind of that same idea of a three sisters garden, just in a like small section of the garden. We've got the zucchini, which is a form of squash. That's essentially the idea of that is to be the ground cover to protect um, the soil around the corn. And so I think I'm actually, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to place the vines yet. Uh, so it might not be a really true three sisters garden, but that's okay. Uh, behind it, we've got the glass gem corn, which I'm so excited about because it's so beautiful. Uh, and then behind that, we've got the beans. Bear, homie. They freak me out when they look into the tree like that. Bear, hi, you proud of yourself? You know you're not supposed to sit in my garden beds, but you look so happy. Yeah. You enjoying yourself? Hi. Are you having a good sit? Oh, and I almost forgot two of my favorite seeds, jelly melon and kajari melon. I feel very blessed to have some Kajari melon because I know that Baker Creek sold out because of Miss Jessica Sowards loving her Kajari melons um, and everybody else loving their Kajari melons. Uh, and yeah, I'm really excited to try different kinds of melons. I've never grown melons before, so this is a totally new adventure. I'm sure I'm gonna have to learn a lot about new pests and things, uh, but the melons seem to be doing well. And my, my goal here is just to trellis them. I'm going to create some trellises and add them to the beds um, so yeah, hopefully that works out okay. And then on the ends of these beds, I have some San Marzano tomatoes from Italy. The seeds are from Italy, from my friend Wendy over at Hardnack Farms. Such a sweet lady. One of the first people I exchanged seeds with uh, through Instagram, I think it was. And then she started her own YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely go check that out. Um, but I'm really, I'm so excited to have direct sow tomatoes that are doing well, that are from Italy. Um, and as you guys probably know, being home cooks, you know that San Marzano tomatoes are like important flavor wise to Italian cooking. So um, that gets me really excited to kind of connect with my roots in that way, I suppose. And then, oh, hey, hey, Oliver, 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 what are you doing? Are you stuck, homie? What? Oliver. All right, so here's a fun fact for you. Oliver could not figure out how to walk on a leash when he was a baby. Ow. And so I had them on leashes as babies because we had dogs in the neighborhood and they needed to go eat their grass, but the dogs would be walking anyway. Long story short, Oliver couldn't figure it out. And so, or he would honestly kind of throw a fit about it. Oliver would kind of throw a fit about having to wear a leash. And so I said, well, oh my God. You guys are actually full of it today. What is going on with you guys? Now you're in this corner? Okay. Are you serious? Are you tired of having your leash on too? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Maybe if you just hang out right here and then when I'm not looking, you'll just try and hop the fence again. Is that your master plan? Yeah, you're so smart. Yeah. Okay, well, we definitely need to plant some peas here so that you can't be doing this. This is cuckoo. You have a place to lay. You have a place to lay. Oh, what? Come here. Gotta get out of my garden. Come on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So back to what I was saying. <laughs> These cats crack me up. Oh man, I love animals so much. They just bring so much joy, even when they're total rascals. Long story short, Bear could figure out how to walk on a leash. Oliver couldn't, and so Oliver used to ride around on my shoulders, and that's still something that we do, uh, especially when he's in a tricky situation like that and I need to Get him out of it, I'll just throw him on my shoulders and we'll go. Welcome to the madness of having cats in the garden. Hi, 
Oh, switching it up. Laying down now. He decided that he would lay while I was finishing my segment on the cat. You laying down here? Is this a good, oh, okay. Oh, my freaking cats. My cats today are out of control. Oh, also, I don't know if I showed you guys that I built a gate. I built a gate, so now the cats can't get it out into the dog run. I built this. Built that with the leftover wood from the garden bed project. I really like the black accents. Oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, building a gate was pretty simple. At least it was easier than I thought it was gonna be. Look at this guy. What are you doing? pollinator garden is also doing really well and I actually had dreams last night you guys I had some really awesome dreams I dreamt last night that there were thousands of monarchs here getting ready getting ready for thousands of monarchs that there was this one lady monarch laying eggs on all of the milkweed that I've been saving and holding on to from our first place and so that was a really sweet dream I'm really looking forward to hatching out some monarchs Ooh, a swallowtail just went by and I had dreams that we had dogs and bunnies too. I would love to get some bunnies. All in all though, I have to say, I have to say that Tommy has done an incredible job keeping this garden alive while I was away. I'm very impressed and very thankful. He did such a good job. Well, that's it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you guys in the next one.